Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at interpreting NMR spectra and this is the third video. Now these videos are designed to uh, basically guide you through how to solve some NMR exam style questions um, using NMR data to come up with the structure of a molecule. Now um, this one is going to be slightly different because we've got table instead and we don't actually have uh, a spectra to actually interpret but we've got the information that you would find on the spectra but it's just presented differently so these videos are uh, designed so that you can have a look at the work have a look at the uh, the data first uh, and then you can have a go at it yourself and pause the video whenever you want you know to make sure you're following uh, the right the right tracks um, I've also put up the um, chemical shift data as well that I'm going to use which is on the right hand side so you know feel free to use that as well Okay, so we're going to start with this example. Like I say, it's a bit different because we've got the uh, NMR data that's in a table form instead. So we've got our uh, chemical shift values, which are at the top. We've got our splitting values as well. And we've also got integration values for each of these. Uh, and we've been told that the molecular formula that we have to work with is C5H10O2. Now you can see that, um, it's like you say, it's arranged in a different way. So I'm just going to make it a little bit clearer. Uh, and I'm going to give each row a letter. Uh, basically, that's the number of hydrogen environments that we have. And this is proton NMR as well, as you can see, because of the numbers. So um, I'm just going to put some numbers at the top, some letters. So I'm going to call this A, B, C, and D. And what I'll do is I'll refer to each of these letters so you know where I'm, uh, where I'm working at. Okay, so if we start with this one here, um, we'll just say this is the one that's shifted the most. Um, you can start anywhere, really, but I'm just going to start on this one here. So we've got a shift of 3.64. Now you can see on our uh, shift data over here that 3.64 would fit in here uh, or it would fit in uh, on the group above. So what we have to do is look at our molecular formula and you can see that it can't be this one because this one is a shift data for a, a, a haloalkane or a molecule with a halogen in. Our molecule doesn't have a halogen in so it's got to be this one here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take uh, D first which is this one. Uh, and we're going to write down basically what the molecule is. So we'll look at the shift data and it tells us that we have an oxygen with a CH on there. So I'm going to start and put that on there. So I'll put the oxygen and we have a carbon. Now uh, it says that it's an integration of two, which tells us that we have two hydrogens on this carbon itself. So I'm going to put that on there like that. But the splitting pattern tells us that we've actually got another carbon next to it. Uh, and because it's a triplet, it means that according to the n plus 1 rule, it means that we have two hydrogens next door to this carbon that we're looking at. So I'm going to put the other carbon on there now. And effectively, that's what this uh, splitting pattern tells us. So we've done D. I'm just going to tick that off just to say that we've addressed that one. So what the next thing, which would be wise, is to try and find the um, information for this carbon that we've just written down here. And it means we keep everything tidy. So we're looking for another peak with an integration of two. Um, apart from this one, you can see there's only one other one that's left, which is this one here. So this is now we're going to address um, B. So I'm going to put B here. Okay. Um, and so this carbon is related to B. And we have a shift of 2.59. So if we try and find 2.59 in here, we can see it will fit in here. So what it means is this hydrogen on this carbon uh, is next door to a carbon with a double bond oxygen on it. So I'm going to redraw this molecule out here. And we're basically going to add new bits onto it. So that's what we had originally. That's what we worked out from the first peak. But what we found out in addition to this for B is we found out that this is bonded to a carbon with a double bond oxygen. So this hydrogen here in red tells us it's effectively the same as this hydrogen or this hydrogen. So I'm going to put a carbon there and we have a double bond oxygen. We don't know what's on the other side yet. OK, so uh, it says it's a triplet. Now, this is a triplet because it's bonded to uh, bonded to a carbon with two other hydrogens and to the right. There's no other hydrogens on there, so that fits, so that actually works. Um, and you can see it's got an integration of two because we have two hydrogens there. So that's that one done. So you can see we're starting to add to our molecule, we're starting to develop it. Okay, so we'll tick that one off. Okay, so if we come back to this one, we'll look at C now. Um, now you can see 
I'll put this over here. So uh, the environment C, we've got a shift of 3.33. Uh, now, if we look down here and try and find 3.33, we can see that it would fit in in this group here. And um, what it's telling us is we have a splitting of singlets, but we have three hydrogens in this environment. So we've got an oxygen with three hydrogens next to it. Now you can see that we've actually, if we go back to our molecular formula, we have our two oxygens already. So we don't need to add another oxygen in there. But what we do have to add is we have CH3, because it says we've got an integration of three, next to an oxygen. We've got an oxygen here already with a spare bond that we need to add to. So this peak here would be because of a CH3 group at the end next to this oxygen that we've already established was there already. So again, we're going to draw out the molecule. So I'm going to put the oxygen. And you can see all it is with NMR is we're just building up the picture and we're making sure, constantly referring back to our molecular formula to make sure that, we're, that we have all the right atoms in there. Okay, so you can see that this one here is a singlet, which suggests that we have the three hydrogens and they're not next door to anything else or any other hydrogen. And that would fit this as well because you've got your oxygen there. So that's fine. And you can see we're starting to develop our molecule now, which is becoming closer and closer to this molecular formula. Uh, and the shift pattern fits as well. Okay, so we'll take that off. We'll make sure that one's done. There you go. And then obviously we've only got one more peak now. Uh, and this is peak A. So I'm going to put A here. Okay. So peak A, we've only got one space left. And that's over here. All the rest of it's actually been used up. So this is getting a bit easier as we go along. And we can see this is a shift of 2.18. Um, so that means uh, if we come and look at our data, 2.18 would fit in this area here. So it's telling us that we have a C double bond O or hydrogen next to a C double bond O, which is going to fit. So that fits actually there. It tells us it's a singlet, which means we've got a group of hydrogens next door to a carbon with no other hydrogens on it, which fits this as well. And it tells us that this uh, environment has three hydrogens in itself. So that would mean that this would have to be a CH3. So I'm just going to draw out our molecule, redraw it out again, and this should give us our final molecule. Okay, there you go. And then at the end, we said we had the CH3, so we'll put that on the end there. Okay, doke. Right, so if we just check again, we'll take that off. Uh, make sure it matches our molecular formula. Always check that to make sure it works. So you've got C5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's fine. H10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then O2, 1, 2. And it matches because we've checked it off and make sure that it fits. But it's as simple as that. But you, you can see how we've developed the molecule. We start with one. We look at the splitting pattern, what's next door to it. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're adding... Every time we have a, a shift of 2.59 or any other shift, that we keep adding more and more oxygens. It's just telling us what's next door to it. We might have already got that oxygen there already. So you can see we didn't have to add another C double bond O. And your molecular formula will help you a lot with this as well. But NMR is effectively really powerful because it shows you about structure. It shows you how the atoms are arranged. And it's really good for trying to um, determine isotopes, uh, sorry, isomers of different molecules. Um, but that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.